If you've been following us on TikTok or Instagram, you've already seen this machine in action. We posted some fun teasers showing it engrave a massive acrylic Velf Creations sign, cut out custom luggage tags, and even pop up in our light burn print and cut wizard tutorial. But if you're only watching us on YouTube, well, now's your chance to catch up. We are finally giving the One Laser XRF a proper overview. One Laser sent us this machine for free in exchange for creating content. So yes, this video is part of that agreement. But like everything we do here at Valve Creations, we are giving you our full honest thoughts and experience. No fluff, no hype, just how this thing has worked for us in the real world. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, you already know we like sharing gear we actually use and how it fits into our creative process. Let's kick things off with setup. Out of the box, the XRF is just about ready to go. The only assembly we had to do was attach the exhaust fan to the back of the machine, literally four screws. That's it. Everything else comes pre-installed, including the lens, mirrors, air assist, everything you need to get started engraving and cutting right away. One thing that caught us off guard, though, was finding the right table. Most desks are 24 inches deep, and we weren't sure if the laser would fit. Turns out, it does. The feet land cleanly on the surface, even though the body sticks out a bit in the front and back. It's perfectly stable. We ended up going with a Husky stand-up desk from Home Depot, and it's been great. Sturdy, clean look, and it raises up for maintenance when needed. Once the laser was in place, we jumped right into projects. We've been making UV printed and laser cut acrylic signs, keychains, plywood signage, key holders, bookmarks, earrings, luggage tags, cork coasters, plant markers, you name it. The cool part is that dialing in the settings has been super easy. If you've used a diode or CO2 laser before, the workflow is familiar, but this machine just feels faster and cleaner. And here's the biggest thing. We can finally cut all colors of acrylic. Our diode and fiber lasers really struggle with that, especially white and light-colored sheets. The XRF? No problem. It slices right through like butter. Let's talk about what actually makes the XRF different from other lasers in this space. If you're coming from a diode laser, like an X-Tool D1, Atom Stack, or similar, you're going to notice a massive upgrade. Diode lasers are a great intro to laser engraving, but they have limitations. They're generally slower, less powerful, and can't cut a lot of materials. Like colored acrylic, diodes can't touch it. Even engraving white paper can be tricky. Now glass tube CO2 lasers are the next step up, and they do handle a much wider range of materials. Machines like the OMTech Polar or X-Tool P2 can cut and engrave with more power and depth, but they come with trade-offs, like having to deal with water cooling systems, water chillers tubing, the risk of leaks, even worrying about your lines freezing in winter. And the tubes themselves, they wear out after a few thousand hours and need replacing. That's where the XRF comes in. It uses a 38-watt RF metal tube, not a CO2 glass tube. The difference is huge. RF tubes are air-cooled. No chillers, no pumps, no tubes. They're also way more durable, rated for 30,000 hours compared to around three to 5,000 for glass tubes. That's 10 times the lifespan. And the performance? It punches way above its weight. Even though it's only 38 watts, the beam is so precise, it's just 0.07 millimeters wide, that it delivers results closer to what you'd expect from a 60 watt glass tube. Engraving detail is crazy sharp. It's capable of up to 2000 DPI and photorealistic engraving, which is something most hobby lasers can't even attempt. Speed is another big win. The XRF engraves at up to 1200 millimeters per second with 3G acceleration, meaning the laser can change direction super fast. That's a game changer if you're doing complex engravings or repeating production work. Most hobby machines max out around 500 millimeters per second. This is more than twice that. And finally, it's quiet. The motors are smooth, the airflow is subtle, and when we hooked it up to our inline exhaust fan using a 3D printed adapter, the whole thing ran quieter than most desktop 3D printers. If you're running it in a shared space or a small workshop, that's something you and your ears will appreciate. The touchscreen on the XRF has been great. You can jog the laser head, start autofocus, run files directly from the internal memory. 
it's all really intuitive. You don't even need to stay tethered to your computer, which is perfect when you're doing repeat jobs or batch runs. The red dot alignment tool is another feature we've leaned on a lot. It's aligned perfectly with the beam path, so lining up cuts or engravings is quick and super accurate. Especially for things like layered acrylic signage or UV printed pieces, it makes life way easier. We've been storing files right on the machine, which means we can run entire batches from the touchscreen without having to open Lightburn. It's small stuff like that that really streamlines your process. But we have had a few issues. Our camera connection has been finicky. It uses a second USB cable, and sometimes it doesn't connect right away in Lightburn. Restarting the software usually fixes it, but it's annoying when you're trying to move quickly. Also, autofocus is required before every job, which adds a few extra seconds each time. One laser has confirmed a firmware update is coming that will let us toggle that off when needed. We also had two small hardware issues. Our light bar wasn't turning on and the Y axis wasn't responding out of the box. Turns out both were due to loose connections. We had to remove the guide rail on the lid to plug in the light bar and we reseated a cable on the main board to get the Y axis working. Both fixes took under 10 minutes, but we wanted to share in case others run into similar things, especially since we've seen a few posts in the Facebook group about the same issues. One thing we haven't tested yet is the riser base and rotary attachment. The riser gives you more vertical clearance so you can engrave taller items like tumblers or round stock. It also unlocks pass-through mode, which lets you run longer materials straight through the machine. As for the rotary, it's designed to hook right into the back port and works with rollers like the Pyburn 5. We don't have those accessories right now, but if it's something you want to see, let us know in the comments. If there's enough interest, we'll reach out and try to get our hands on them for a follow-up video. Before we wrap up, let's talk deals. One Laser is running an Independence Day promo from June 26th through July 7th. The XRF is marked down to $3,979 with free shipping. The XT, Hydra 7, Hydra 9, and other models are also discounted. Full promo details are in the description along with our affiliate link. If you're thinking about buying one, using that link helps support the channel without costing you anything extra. So what do you think? Are you considering the XRF or are you sticking with your diode or CO2 setup? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear what kind of projects you're working on and what machines you're using. If this video helped you out, give it a like, drop a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to Velf Creations. We've got more videos on the way, more builds, more gear tests, and hopefully some rotary testing soon. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay creative.